Since leaving the classroom, starting my own business, and being on TikTok, I get lots of questions daily, like a lot of questions about a lot of different things. And so I thought I'd take some time today to answer some of them. It can be really hard to get to all of your questions on TikTok and through email because I do receive so many. So I thought I'd sit down today and answer some of them. Okay, so why did you leave the classroom? This is one of the top questions that I get. It's kind of a long story in a way, but the short version is we had an after school meeting one day. It was in the middle of the year, it was around January, and our principal wanted us to look at our iReady data and reorganize our small groups, our math and reading small groups, just based on this iReady data, which if you know iReady, sometimes kids can just click through and they're not, it's not really accurate. It doesn't really give us an accurate read on what they know and what they can do. So I knew that just going off of these numbers was not accurate. I knew what these kids could do in my classroom. iReady was just a part of it, but we had to just use those numbers to rearrange everything in our classroom. And I just felt like that was, that was it. I had been micromanaged enough. That was just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And I remember leaving and thinking, okay, what else can I do with my teaching degree? I can't do this for 28 more, 27 more years. I just can't, I just can't do this. And so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna start a tutoring business, build it up to the point to be able to walk away from the classroom so that I can do it full time. And I was able to do it in just six months. So there you go. But that was ultimately the straw that broke the camel's back. I was tired of the micromanagement. I was tired of not being trusted to do my job. Lots of other things that went into it obviously, but that was really, that was the final straw for me. How long were you in the classroom? So I only taught for three years. I taught kindergarten, first and third, and I actually taught in two different districts. I was at a really tough school in the beginning, which I loved, loved my kids, loved my coworkers. Um, and then I just got a different opportunity at a school where I was gonna have more freedom, or so I thought. No, I did have more freedom, but you know, there's things that just span across education as a whole that I wasn't vibing with. But anyway, yeah, I taught in two different districts, two very different schools. I taught third grade, which was very high in testing, you know. Testing was really important, didn't really love that. Loved kindergarten, loved first. I actually taught a K-1 combo one year thought they were gonna have to put me in a rubber room when they told me that, but it, it ended up being like one of my favorite years ever. So I'd probably have to say first was my favorite though. They were just so little, but funny. Like the things they would say, the things that, that, that would come out of their mouths were just hilarious. Um, they got my sense of humor. I'm very dry. I'm not very like overly bubbly, which is fine. You don't have to be to be a teacher, but they got it and they were just, I loved it. It was so fun. We got to do crafts and yeah. So I would say, um, Oh yeah, to answer your question, three years. <laughs> but my favorite out of all the grade levels that I taught was first grade. Next question, what grade was your favorite to teach? Just got ahead of myself there, already answered that. But there you go, first. First was definitely my favorite for all those reasons. Do you have any kids? I do, I have one kid, one girl. Um, she is, oh, she's six, she just turned six. Um, we love her so much. And um, let me get her really fast. Ooh, she just woke up from a nap, so she's really sleepy, but here's my child. This is Pepper. Hi. Okay, sorry, you can go back to your nap. Thank you. So that's her. Did the things you talk about in your TikToks actually happen? Yes. My TikToks are based off of true stories. Some of the things I went through myself, some of the things are inspired by stories that other teachers have shared with me, but yes, these are all things that happen, have happened, will continue to happen in the classroom. They're all true stories. Now, obviously some things are exaggerated, you know, and some things are satire, but for the most part, things are inspired by real events that happen in the classroom, especially my Why I'll Never Go Back series, all true stories. How did you get started tutoring? So I actually just made a YouTube video about this. It goes through the 10 steps that I took to start and grow my own tutoring business. And I will attach it in this video. So go check it out when you get a chance. How many kids do you tutor? My business is always evolving. It's always changing, right? 
So I started out as a tutor. I grew my tutoring business and then I thought, okay, I want to help other burnout teachers. I want to show them that there's a way to make more money or get out of the classroom if that's what they want to do. So then I started a consulting business where I was coaching burnout teachers on how to start their own tutoring business, how to grow it. So I had a bunch of kids that I was tutoring. I was running a learning pod. I was coming home and then doing a bunch of private sessions during the afternoons and evenings and it was becoming too much. Then throw TikTok into the mix. I got on TikTok around that same time. I started to scale my tutoring back a little bit because my business had then become focused on helping burnout teachers and creating content for TikTok. So starting out, I probably would say I had maybe like 12 plus kids that I was tutoring at one time. Now my schedule, I only have time for about four kids a week, actually three kids a week and one of them I see more than once. I just don't have time to give to my tutoring like I used to. Obviously still love it, still love working with kids, but because things have grown for me um, in different ways, you know, I've had to cut back on my tutoring hours um, during the week. What does your weekly schedule look like with tutoring? So again, things are very different now than when I first started. When I first started, like first, first started, I was holding a couple sessions in the evening. Like when I was done with school, I would go meet clients at the library. And then as the summer came, I was working in maybe two to three clients a week, building, building, building. And that's when things kind of exploded for me. I started my learning pod in August. So I had four kids there. And during my learning pod, it was Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays from 8.30 to 2.30 and that was only 18 hours a week and just with that 18 hours a week i was making more than i was in the classroom <sighs> crazy but anyway i would come home i would use wednesday during the whole day to tutor privately i would use my afternoons and evenings to to tutor so i was like i was grinding and it was a lot it was a lot um, but i was making a lot of money like i was tripling my teacher income and so back last school year um is when tutoring and teaching privately was was huge for me and so i had fridays off i used fridays to plan and do other things and so i was working really hard monday tuesday wednesday thursday but i had i gave myself fridays off but that's the thing with this is that it's so amazing because it's so flexible i could craft my schedule however i want to but right now my schedule is different so most of my day is dedicated towards creating content for TikTok and YouTube and running my Instagram page and my Facebook communities. Filming, so many hours goes into filming and editing the videos, huge, 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 huge. Like I said, things have changed so much for me and I'm so thankful, but most of my week is used for the content side of things. So with tutoring on Mondays, I have a four to five and then a five to 5.45. On Tuesdays, I just have a 4.30. On Wednesdays, I have a four to 4.45 and a five to 5.45 and that's it. During the mornings and afternoons, I use to get my content right and filmed and edited. Thursdays and Fridays are used for that as well. But yeah, that's what my tutoring schedule specifically looks like now. It will change as summer comes. I'll probably take on a few more clients. Some clients may take a break, so I'll take on different clients or new clients. My hours will open up during the mornings and afternoons more. I also do hold morning openings for any homeschool kiddos as well. So don't feel like you have to tutor like just in the afternoon and evenings. You'd be surprised how many homeschool kiddos can come do in the mornings as well. Did you always know that you wanted to be a teacher? No, but yes. My story isn't really that inspiring. I was an athlete my whole life. I went to college to play division one softball and that was my focus in school. I was a softball player. I majored in psychology. I majored in something that I thought would be easy for me to leave and like continue with and get a job with. I just wasn't focused on academics. So when I graduated, I was a floundering retired athlete. I had no idea what I was gonna do. And so my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, he was kind of in a similar situation. He's also a was also a retired athlete. And we were just kind of floundering. We didn't know what we were gonna do. So we were like, okay, let's think about what's important to us. Well, we like to help people. We like kids, we love kids, we love working with kids. Our time is important to us, like having breaks together and times together to travel and spend time with family. These things were all important to us. And so when we looked at all these things together, it was very clear that teaching fit into all these categories. So I went back to get my master's in the art of teaching, was certified K through six and became a teacher. My husband took a different path as far as schooling goes, went back to get a second degree, um, but still became a teacher as well. So it's not like super inspiring where I'm like, I just, 
it just wasn't like that and that's just that's just the, the reality of it but once i got in the classroom my gosh it was so clear i was where i needed to be at the time you know i loved my kids i loved where i worked um you know despite me leaving obviously um but there were so many amazing people that i worked with and for and my kids were awesome so teaching as a career for me was wonderful. The big guy upstairs just had different plans for me. What advice do you have for a student teacher? Okay, so my advice for you is to keep everything that your cooperating teacher shares with you, gives you, shows you, whatever. When I started teaching, I my first year, I used everything that was given to me during my student teaching experience. It was so helpful. I had behavior sheets, word documents, whole units laid out for me with no prep needed. It was just ready to go. If I had not had those things and had not just kind of used her methods and routines to get me started, I don't know what I would have done, but I pretty much copied everything she did and let that lead me into my own year. And then I kind of fine tuned what I found was working, made it my own. And that really helped me get through my first year. Also fake it till you make it. Act like you're confident, even if you are shaking in your boots. Kids respond to confidence. A little confidence, even when you're not feeling like it, will get you a long way in the classroom. And last, one of the questions that I get asked all the time, would you steer people away from being a teacher? No, never. The world needs more good teachers. I am not here on TikTok, on YouTube, on any of these social media platforms to discourage people from being a teacher. I like to bring to light a lot of issues that teachers are facing in the classroom these days, but it's not to say that teachers don't experience even more great and amazing things in the classroom. Unfortunately, nothing's going to change until people start speaking up and bringing awareness to a lot of the things that teachers are dealing with. And hopefully some of the things that I showcase can make people a little bit more aware. But if you have a passion for teaching, you know in your heart and soul that you are supposed to be a teacher. It's what you love, it's what lights you up. Please do it, be a teacher. Like I said, the world needs more good teachers, but do be aware, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. But let's get this straight, no job is sunshine and rainbows. As long as you're aware of the good and the bad and you go in having a plan, you're good to go. I hope this video has been helpful. If you ever have any more questions, you can always drop them below in a comment. You can shoot me an email, I'll leave my email address below. I love, love, love connecting with and getting to know all of you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.